secant and the co-function. So we have to find OQ on this in this opening exercise. And this should be somewhat of a review. Here's where OQ is at. Remember, this is not a zero, that's an O. The origin is zero, zero, but that just happens to be point O as well. And we have to find OQ. When we're finding OQ, remember that we had, if we put more familiar letters on this, X, or not X, I did it again, I did that yesterday, Y and X. If I did cosine here, cosine theta would equal the adjacent here over the hypotenuse and in the unit circle that's going to be 1. So that means cosine theta just equals x and we labeled OQ as x. So that means OQ would have to equal cosine theta. We have to find PQ PQ is this item here. Now PQ we've been labeling as Y. It has an M there. We can use either one. So if I wanted to find PQ, I could use sine theta equals Y over the hypotenuse, which is 1 in the unit circle. So that means sine theta would just equal Y or M in this case. And of course, whether it be Y, M, or PQ, they're all the same side, so you can say PQ equals sine theta. From your homework, you had a problem that was similar to this. And RS is right here. RS is on that tangent line, the line that touches the circle in just one point. And here's theta. If we want to find RS, we need to take advantage of the fact that this piece right here, out to from the center and touching the edge of the circle, has a measurement of 1, because that's the unit circle. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if I did tangent of theta degrees, I would use the opposite. Now the opposite does not have to be PQ. We're not using that side. We're looking for RS, which is out here. So opposite, which is M, over adjacent, which is this whole side here. 1. So that means tangent theta just equals M. M over 1 is M. And M is the same side as RS. So RS equals tangent theta. And here's kind of a review of what we just did. Here, This triangle here is the larger triangle. This point here, S, is on the circle. This point R is not on the circle. Just think of the circle as coming out like this, and then like that. And we just found this piece here, RS. And we did it by using tangent. Tangent theta degrees is this side over this. OS is a radius. And it's the unit circle, so that means its measure is 1. That's why we can say that tangent theta degrees is that m over 1, and m over 1 is just m. So this side up here is equal to tangent theta. Now today is the secant. <coughs> secant and other co-functions. Secant is a line that intersects a circle at more than one point. So here is a circle and a secant could be like that, intersects at more than one point. Now secant 
is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent. What is that the inverse of? If you flip this, you get adjacent over hypotenuse. What is that? Cosine. So secant is going to be the opposite of cosine, hypotenuse over adjacent. And then by process of elimination, you can come up with the other items, such as this. This one is pretty obvious. Cotangent, adjacent over opposite. Of course, that's the opposite of tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. And then the remaining one you would have cosecant. And cosecant would be hypotenuse over opposite, which would be the same thing, or the opposite of sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Example 1. Use similar triangles to find the value of secant theta in terms of one other trigonometric function. So we're going to prove essentially what secant is equivalent to. So these two triangles should look similar to you. From our unit circle that we've been doing, you have a triangle that goes like this. Actually that's part of the circle come out like that and you have a triangle that we've labeled O, P, and Q. But then we went further out like this and came back down and touched here at this point. We labeled that R and then S. I've broken those two triangles up into two different triangles. So we have OPQ and ORS. Those two triangles are similar because they share this angle. So we know from the beginning notes that secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So if you look at this, this is hypotenuse here on this one. Here's adjacent. Here's hypotenuse. Here's adjacent. Remember these two triangles are similar. And we're going to use the fact that they're similar to set up proportions that we can use to figure out what secant theta is equivalent to. So secant theta is the same thing as OP. Here's OP. Remember that's the hypotenuse there over OQ. And remember that's the adjacent. And over here on this side, secant theta is equal to OR, and that's the hypotenuse, over OS, and that's the adjacent. We came up with these two fractions by just following the secant order, hypotenuse over adjacent. Now if you have the same angle, which you do here and here because those triangles were sharing that angle, then it only makes sense that this fraction be equal to this fraction. OP over OQ would equal OR over OS, and that's what we're doing right here. If you're doing this over this, and then this over this, since they're sharing this angle, these two would have to be equivalent to each other. So OP is going to be 1. Remember, this is from where this point P touches on the circle, so we know that one is 1. And OQ down here is this side. That side is the x-axis side. And in the unit circle, that side is equal to cosine theta. We've been over that a million times. So OP is 1, OQ is cosine theta. So from that, you can logically deduce that OP over OQ equals 1 over cosine theta, and that is equivalent to secant theta. That's why 
secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. So if you're in the uh, unit circle, which you are on this triangle here, over here, you know that this one is a side length of 1. Not this one, because that goes outside the circle. This is a 1. And then down here, this is cosine theta. We've been over that one a bunch. Secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent. Hypotenuse over adjacent. There, there. Secant theta. You're looking at this unit circle up here, and this unit circle is no different than any other one that we've drawn, with the exception that maybe most of ours have gone like that, but the ray just goes up a little bit higher. But it's still the same type of unit circle. The radius is still going to be 1. You're still going to have a point out here of 1, 0. Point P is still going to be here. Center is there and your unit circle is derived from x squared plus y squared equals 1. Just a simple question here, what is the domain of the secant function? Domain is going to be x values. Anytime you have a function, x is what you're putting into it, that's going to be the domain. What you get out of it is y, that's usually the range. So what is the domain of the secant function? The domain of the secant function is all real numbers so that theta is not equal to 90 plus 180k. And remember what I told you about this. If you see 90 plus 180k, that means it's referring to where on the xy axis system. What point is that referring to? I told you earlier on in the lesson. Where's 90 degrees at? Q. 90 degrees on the XY coordinate system. 90 degrees is here. So there's the 90. And if I add to that 180 or any multiple of 180, that means I'm going around this way. So it can't be here. So it can't be 90, it can't be 180, and if I go another multiple of 180, I'm back, right back around where I started. So it's not going to be on the y-axis. The domain of the secant function can be anything, all real numbers, such that theta is not 90 degrees, 270, or back around, whatever multiple of that, that is. It just cannot be the y-axis. Theta cannot fall on the y-axis. You can use anything else. The reason why, here's secant. Secant theta equals 1 over cosine theta. How would you come up with something that is undefined? What generally happens when you come up with something that's undefined? In a fraction, what part of a fraction makes something undefined? On the top or the bottom? If I have something on the top, zero on the top of a fraction, it just makes the fraction equal to zero. Unless there is something on the bottom that is not supposed to be there. What can you not have in the bottom of a function that makes it undefined? Zero, zero yes. Remember that secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. You look at your triangle. here and here. If I had cosine theta degrees, cosine theta degrees is right here. We found that that segment is equal to cosine theta degrees. Therefore, cosine is this over this here. So what happens if you're on the y-axis? What is the length of this segment here if it's moved over to the y-axis? Okay, I'll change to black. See this segment right here? It is equivalent to cosine theta degrees. 
what happens if I move this dot over here to the y-axis, or yeah, right here to the y-axis? What is its value now? Zero. So secant theta is this over this. That would give me a zero on the bottom of that fraction. That is why in this problem here, the domain is anything except this. It just cannot fall on the y-axis because your distance from the center out on that piece of the triangle would be zero. Same unit circle, same drawing exactly. The domains of the secant and the tangent functions are the same. And why is that? Alright, so take a look at this. Secant function, we'll switch back to red. Remember this is 1 and this is cosine theta. Now for your tangent function, if you had tangent of theta, remember this is sine theta and we learned that yesterday tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta or just opposite over adjacent. You can think of this as opposite and this as adjacent. So why are the domains of the secant function and the tangent function the exact same? Why do they have the same exclusions? Here it is written again. Secant is going to be the hypotenuse 1 over cosine theta. And tangent, we know, is going to be uh, sine theta over cosine theta. So why is the domain the exact same as it was in the last problem for secant as it is for tangent? What is the same? Yeah, you have cosine theta on the bottom, so they would share the exact same domain. They have the same exclusions. You can't do tangent when you're on the y-axis because this piece right here it just ends up being zero. It does not work out. What is the range of the secant function? How is the range related to the range of the cosine function? So here we go back here. The, we're talking about the range, which is the y value and stuff like that most commonly. So you have 1 over cosine theta. That's for the secant function. And then rate it related to the cosine function. All right, so we'll come down here and look at this. Since secant theta is 1 over cosine theta, and we've written this a bunch of times today, and I'll make it a little bigger for you so you can see it. Since secant theta is 1 over cosine theta, and cosine theta must be between and including negative 1 and positive 1. Cosine theta can be between negative 1 and positive 1, and here is why. Here's cosine theta, that measurement there. It can only go out to there, that's a positive 1 and then back here is a negative one. Since these two things are in place here, you can see that either secant theta is greater than one or secant theta is going to be less than one. Whoops, less than negative one. It's got to be greater than one, I should say, out here, or less than negative one. Thus, the range of the secant function is negative infinity up to and included, including negative 1 as well as 1 on out to infinity. Is the secant function a periodic function? If so, what is its period? Have you had this in science yet? Yes, no? You don't know? I don't think so. Okay, so if you haven't had it in science, then I'll approach this as if you haven't had it at all. That's why I put this over here. Here's an example of a period function. Notice that it goes up to this point, back down, and then up to this point again. And it's repeating the same y values over the course of the x-axis. You go up to here, back down, 
And once you get to this point, you start to repeat items that were already sh <coughs> already showing up before. So is the secant function a periodic function? If you kept going with your secant function and you started plotting it off, you had an x value and then you plot the y, would it keep going like that? And the answer is yes. And it has a period of 360 degrees, which means this. If I come out to here and do secant of this zero, I'm going to get a value, I plot it. Let's say I come up here and get a value, plot it. I'm going to plot that all the way around for whatever it is, for a function of x where x would be the number of degrees, and y comes out to be the value of the secant. And once I get back to here, it's going to start repeating those values again, even though this may be 450 here, and then on out to there, 540, uh, 630, 720 for two, two rotations. It will repeat those values, and it will look similar may not be exactly, but similar to that. And its period is 360 because that's how long it takes to go through one cycle of all of its values. Once you go beyond 360, it starts repeating things that already happened before. What are the values of secant theta when the terminal ray is horizontal? So I'll even draw a picture for you. We'll go like that. And the, hor or the uh, terminal ray the terminal ray is that thing that's been going out like this that makes the point P on the circle. But what are the values of secant theta when the terminal ray is horizontal? So I'll, I'll put horizontal in blue. There and there. Remember, it is going to be a 1 there for that distance from here to there. And then back here you have a negative 1 because it's going all the way out like that touching the circle what do you think the value of secant theta would be when the it's horizontal knowing that secant theta whoops not SEO but secant theta equals 1 over cosine theta or just 1 over the x value one or negative one because this ends up on the bottom this is on the bottom of the invisible triangle which has been flattened now and this value is always what? one it's always going to be positive one this way and this way so over here you have one over negative one and this way one over one so either way it's going to be negative one or positive one In the diagram below, the blue line is tangent to the unit circle. Notice this is drawn differently than what we've always been doing, where we have the ray that goes out and touches the circle, and then we draw it down. This time, it's going to the y-axis here. Instead of going from this point down, we're going over this way. And we extend this out and bring it back over here. It's, just, it's similar to going here and down, and then here and down but it's still the same type of process. How does this diagram compare to the one given in the opening exercise? So the one out in the opening exercise looks similar to this. We went out to here and down, and then we went out to here and like that. So it's essentially the same diagram except the angles and lengths with different angles and lengths marked. So notice that this length here is not going to be the same thing as that one there. But what can you tell about this? And I'll zoom in so you can see a little, little more clearly. What can you say about this side here and this side? They're the same, yeah. So this was X there and this was our Y previously, but these two here would be the same and you could say the same about that as well. What could you say about these two angles? Here's theta, our normal angle, and then here is what I believe to be beta. What are they? That's 
they are uh, they're adjacent angles. Here's my y-axis and here's my x-axis. What is the measure of this angle here where the x and y axis? How much? He's right. Beta and theta are complementary because whatever theta is, beta adds to it to get 90 degrees. He's right. Which segment in the figure has length of sine theta? And which length has cosine theta? Now remember before we did this, what value was this? Cosine. And what value was this? Not tangent. Sine. Sine theta. Remember that tangent would have been this right here. That's what we were calling R and S. Sine is P, and we usually call that a Q. So if that's cosine theta and the other one is sine theta, then what is this? What do you think it is? Secant? All right, we'll take a look. Whoops, I can't move it out of the way because I'm not up far enough. There we go, there we go. It won't move anywhere. Okay, OU is sine theta. And that's this here, opposite of that. And UP is cosine theta, right here. All right, that's it.